In this video, we are going to take a look at how to get maximum cinematic quality from AI videos. If you follow the generative AI space, then you probably know that these tools change almost every single week, but I'm here to give you the best workflow for getting maximum results with some brand new updates that have dropped in just the last few hours. I hope you enjoy this video, let's hop in. So it all starts with generating the core shots for your specific film project. Now, there are a lot of AI video models out there online. We actually meticulously rate them over at Curious Refuge. You'll find a link below this video to the latest scores from Curious Refuge Labs. So when it comes to generating cinematic videos, there's really two main tools I want you to think about, Kling and Google Vio. Kling specifically will give you maximum cinematic quality, while Google Vio is much better for doing lip syncing. We'll take a look at both both tools inside of this video, but I want to start with Kling because I want to show you exactly how to get maximum cinematic quality if you're trying to go for high-end visuals for large-scale projects. So we're inside of Kling here, and we'll go ahead and click on the Experience Now button, which is a great call to action there, and we'll go over to the Video Generation section and make sure that we are in Video 2.6, which is the latest version of Kling. Now, Rather than typing in a prompt, we're going to upload a start frame so we have much more control over what the final video looks like. So let's go ahead and drag in this still of a spaceship into the start frame section. Now inside of Kling, you do have the ability to generate native audio, which will allow you to generate lip synced voices using English or it will also add in sound effects to your video as well. You can turn that on or off. If you turn it off, you can also define the end frame. So you can define the start frame and the end frame that you want the final frame of the video to be. For this example, I'm just going to stick with a start frame. So for this example, I'm going to say a tracking shot moving forward inside a sci-fi spaceship. And down here, there's a couple of different options. We'll select professional, which will give us better results. You also have the ability to change the duration of the final video and of course the number of outputs and go ahead and hit generate. And after a couple of minutes, we have this shot here, which honestly looks really good. It's very dynamic. You're getting lots of details inside of the spaceship. Now, there are two main problems with this video. The first is it's only in 1080p. So if you're wanting to put this inside of a professional project, usually it requires 4K or beyond. And so we're already limited by the base resolution from Kling. The second problem is there's quite a bit of artifacting and distortion inside of this this video that's taking away from the overall realism. It really does feel synthetic and there's some ways in which we can improve this video. Now, before I show you that specific method, I wanna let you know that we have AI filmmaking courses over at Curious Refuge. We train artists at every major studio. So if you're looking to get very serious about your AI storytelling career, I highly recommend checking out our courses. So now that we have our base video, let's hop over to a tool called Astra. Astra was developed by the team at Topaz and it's an online video platform that will up-res your video footage and give you more cinematic quality. So what we're going to do is drag and drop our video footage from Kling directly inside of Astra. And for the model, we're going to select Starlight Precise 2, which is the latest version of the Precise model. Now under Upscale, you can do 1080p, but of course we're going to do 4K to get maximum quality. You can also change the frame rate if it makes sense for the project, because we're working on a film project, we want it to be in 24 frames per second. You also have the ability to slow down the footage if you wanted to, you totally don't have to. And when you're ready, go ahead and hit render. Now it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes to generate your video clip, but after that 10 minutes, this this is what we get. So you can see we have this shot here. There's just a lot more detail inside of the sci-fi cabin. Things are sharpened, but more specifically, they're not over sharpened. It really is coming across as much more realistic. Now, I know the compression algorithm on YouTube is a little finicky, and so you might not be able to see the full details that we're talking about here, but it is much clearer. It looks very, very good. Now, just using those two steps alone, you'll get some pretty good video footage, but I want to take it one step 
further. So for our final step, what I want to do is clean up some of the compression artifacting that is present inside of the video clip that was up to 4K. And I also want to smooth out some of the choppiness that's present inside of the video. So to do that, we're going to use a tool called Topaz Video. Topaz Video is an application that you can run locally on your computer or in the cloud to up video footage, correct artifacting, fix noise, and do all sorts of maintenance tasks that you may need to do to your video footage to get maximum quality. So what we're going to do is drag and drop our 4K footage from Precision 2 directly into Topaz Video. Now, what I love about the newest version of Topaz Video is they have a button called General Enhancement. And if you select that, it's a very good preset for enhancing these 4K generations that you get from Precise 2. Now, I know that you may not have the latest version of Topaz Video, so I'm going to walk you through each one of the settings very quickly so that you can replicate this at home even if you don't have the latest version. So we want to make sure we have enhancement on our output resolution we are going to set to 4k and the video type of course is progressive for the model we'll select proteus which is the default model it does better nine times out of 10. I think it's very good. So we'll turn up recover detail to 100, but also add noise to zero. We don't want more noise added to the video footage. For focus fix, we'll keep that to off. Now, the setting that I am going to adjust here is grain. So you have the option to apply grain to your video footage inside of Topaz Video. You also can apply grain inside of your post-production application like Adobe Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve if you want to have more fine-tuned control in the editing process. Obviously, if you want maximum control, you'll do that in your video editing application. But if you're just trying to get a clip that looks really good incredibly quickly, you can do that inside of Topaz. So for our example, I'm going to select the silver rich grain, which will emulate film a little bit better. And we're going to turn down the grain amount to 40. I find that the default 50 is a bit too much. Everything else we'll keep as the default setting here. And of course, we have our fixed compression to 40. 45, improve detail down to negative 29, sharpen to 32, and reduce noise to negative 22. All of the other settings are the default settings. And when you're ready, go ahead and hit export. And after a couple minutes, we have this video clip here, which looks very, very good. If you told me this was a clip from a high budget sci-fi film, I would totally believe you. Now, are there a few things that are still a little wonky? Yes, there are a few elements that kind of move around and some of the edges can kind of squiggle just a little bit. So be sure to be on the lookout for that if you are working inside of these AI video tools. I wouldn't say they're going to give you 10 out of 10 quality, but in a lot of cases, it'll be about nine out of 10. So they do a really, really good job. Now I wanna show you a few different examples using this exact same workflow. So here is a base video that we have from Kling, which already looks very, very good. Good, but again, it's in 1080p. Let's say we want to increase the resolution. Well, we'll go through all of the steps that we outlined in this video and get this video clip here, which looks very, very good. There's a ton of detail in the clothing and overall it looks very realistic. We also have this original video clip from Kling. Again, not too bad right off the bat, but if we take a look at the exact same video clip with the up system applied, it looks very, very good. We also have this shot of this aquarium, not too shabby. And then we have the final shot, much more resolution. There's tons of details. It looks very good. And then finally, we have this shot of this man eating ramen. He's just getting after it. It's amazing to think that Will Smith eating spaghetti was only a couple of years ago. And after we run through the 4K process, we have this shot here. There's just a ton of detail. It looks very good, very realistic. Maybe he's eating too many noodles all at once, but hey, maybe the dude's hungry. Okay, so that's the workflow inside of Kling. But a lot of times if you are working inside a studio environment, they may be hesitant to use a tool like Kling because there's definitely some questions about the prominence of the generated video assets that you are creating inside of Kling specifically. So in that case, they may be more comfortable using a tool like Google VO. Now, the cool thing is there's a brand new up tool directly inside of Google VO that allows you to up your VO clips from the 720 native resolution all the way to 4K. It's incredible. And if you pair it with
with an additional step, you can get really good cinematic quality inside of VO. Let me show you how to do it. So to use Google VO, of course, you can go to all sorts of different aggregators, but of course, I'm going to go directly to Google Flow, which is their online platform for generating video clips. Now we'll go ahead and select new project. And from here, we'll go ahead and select frames to video. And let's go ahead and click that plus icon to add in our starting image. So again, I'm going to use that starting image of the sci-fi ship, and we'll keep the prompt exactly the same as when we generated inside of Kling. Under the settings icon, make sure that you are set to 16 by nine and that you are in the latest quality version of Google VO and go ahead and hit generate. So after just a few seconds, we have our video clips here. Let's take a look at a few different options here. Okay, kind of some wonkiness going on there. Let's take a look at number two. I love how it just added in an extra guy there in the background. Number three. That generation's not too bad. And then we have our final shot number four here. I like this one a lot. I think it looks really good. Now, by default, you're going to have banding issues inside of Google VO. The model, for some reason, adds in this diagonal band into most of the generations. So you're going to need to fix that if you're going to use Google VO assets inside of your professional work. Now, the cool thing is Google has actually just come out with a brand new up -reser. If you hit that download icon, you can go down to upscaled 4K, which will upscale your video footage to a 4K format. So we'll go ahead and hit 4K. And after a few minutes, we get this video clip here, which is in 4K. There's a ton of resolution. You can also see very small details in the background. Now, there is some artifacting and noise happening in this video, and I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. But overall, it does a pretty decent job. Now, Google does have a 1080p version of upresing. Here's an example of what that looks like. Honestly, for some reason, the 1080p version hyper sharpens. The edges get really weird. A lot of the online advertisements that you may have seen that utilize generative AI struggle because they used the 1080p output in Google VO rather than 720 and upresing in an external upreser. So 1080p directly from Google VO is not ideal. And I also want to compare upresing directly inside of Google to upresing with Starlight Astra. If you took the same base video clip that was 720p and upresed it in the 4K version of Starlight, you get this example. And it's interesting because I do think that the version you get from Starlight is cleaner than the version you get from Google VO. Like there's less noise and artifacting. The problem is you lose out on more details. And so in a lot of cases, you may prefer to use the Google upres 4K version. Now, finally, we want to finish our Google 4K version inside of Topaz video. So I'm going to drag and drop that Google video clip in here. We'll go to general enhancement and we will go down to grain. And again, silver rich, turn down to 40 and go ahead and hit export. And after a few minutes, we get this video clip here. And there you go. That's how you get maximum quality from Google VO. Of course, if you have your own tips and techniques for getting a maximum quality from AI video tools, we would love to hear them inside of the comments of this video. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe here on YouTube to get the latest AI video tutorials directly here on the platform. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one.